Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, we tackle the Google Ads call only campaign. This campaign is absolutely amazing for any business that is actually looking to generate high quality phone calls. This is normally going to be service based businesses like pool installation, fencing installation, HVAC, companies like that. Not so much e-commerce and selling products online. It's just not a very good match most of the time. That being said, what is this campaign all about? And essentially this campaign allows you to create small ads inside of Google ads. They're not super big, but what the massive benefit of them is, is the user can just click on the actual ad and then immediately call you. They don't gotta go to a website. They don't gotta go to a landing page. They immediately call you and this makes things absolutely awesome for the majority of business owners who just don't have that much time or resources to actually create an entire landing page dedicated to trying and converting people on Google ads. Now I did want to show you results that are actually achievable with this type of campaign. Again, this is completely uh, call based. There's no form submissions. There's no emails. There's, there's nothing of that sort. It is just high quality phone calls. That is it. And this is one of the previous campaigns we ran a few years ago. We did get permission from the client to show this. And this is essentially what we were able to achieve in one week of launching the campaign. The, re the campaign went on to have very, very good results. Uh, but this was essentially the first nine days we were able to receive 12 phone calls at an 18% conversion rate, which is very high at a cost per lead of $19.91. This is for pool installation, a notoriously very expensive niche to be in. So $19 per lead is a very, very good. And I just wanted to show you what is achievable inside this account and essentially this campaign. Now, one thing I did want to mention is most people don't actually know about this campaign. The reason for that is Google just doesn't normally advertise call only ads. I'm not sure as to exactly why they don't, but most people who choose to use this type of ad and actually optimize with them uh, will generally see really, really good results just because there's not a lot of competition out there. So if you are actually willing to take the time to set this entire campaign up and follow the tutorial, you will probably see really good results for your business moving forward. Two things I did want to mention before starting this video. My name's Matt. I'm the director of business here at Tradesman Digital Marketing. We're a lead generation PPC agency that only does Google ads for service based businesses. We are really, really good at this stuff. And the call only ads campaign is something we absolutely love. We use it on a daily basis. It's absolutely awesome. I do get asked almost every single day. Do you offer services? Do you offer X, Y, Z? We have software, we have templates, we have courses, all of that stuff and our services can be found in the link down below. It's an all in one link. So if you have any comments, questions or concerns, click the little link down below. You should be able to find your way there. The second thing I did want to mention is the actual timestamps in this video. If you already have an account, you can save yourself a little bit of time and just go directly to the create a campaign point. That way you don't have to go through the entire creation of an actual account. You already have an account, save yourself a little bit of time, but let's get back to the actual video. So let's get into it. The first thing we have to do is go to Google. What we can do is we can go to Google ads or we can go up here to our right column and literally just scroll down to Google ads, click on this, or you can click on the actual Google ads uh, link here. I'm going to do this because I'm going to create a new account for us. I'm going to click on start now. As I said, we're going to be creating a new account. Once we click on that, it should come up with a whole bunch of our previous accounts. No problem. We're just going to create a new account. If you already have an account uh, and you click on sign in, it will bring you to that. If you don't have an account yet, it will literally just skip this step. So no uh, reason to worry or anything. If you go to a different page, we're all going to get to the same place eventually. All we're going to have to do is click on new Google ads account. Uh, nope, we don't want to finish setting up that account. This will load in. And then as you can see, this is very, very different as opposed to last year's Google has done a massive revamp and everything looks different and that's okay. Everything is essentially the same. It just looks different. Uh, and I will show you how to essentially work our way through all of this. So all we have to do is create a campaign. And then what we're going to do is essentially skip all of this because we don't want to do it. Now you may be thinking that's going to be complicated to skip all of this. Not at all. All we have to do is hit next hit skip. And then as you can see here, it says not ready for a campaign yet. Set up an account only. We're going to click on this button down here. Click on that. We're going to enter in all of our billing information. We're going to hit no. We're going to hit no because we don't want any stuff sent from Google ads as uh, it's rather annoying. Uh, make sure you get the time zone here correctly. You will not be able to change this moving forward. So make sure it's set correctly. The same goes for the currency as well. Make sure this is set up correctly. Uh, do not skip this step super, super important. Uh, and then we just hit submit. 
and this will take us to our new account. Congrats, you're all done. You've set up a Google Ads account in less than five, 10 seconds. Very, very quick to do. All we have to do now is hit explore account. And this will actually take us into the old design. Some people, for whatever reason, might not see this. Uh, you may have to come up here to appearance and then use the old design if you're in the new uh, version of it. I really don't like the new version. I think it is rather difficult to navigate. Um, I like the old one. I'm used to the old one. So we're going to use the old one for this uh, example. I like it a lot better. Now that we have our account set up, all we have to do is come over here to new campaign. Uh, if you have a campaign already, you may just have to come down here to campaigns, hit the big blue plus icon and create a new campaign. Literally the same thing, uh, just two different ways of doing it. Just in case you have an account already, what we're going to do is click on new campaign. Then what we're going to do is come over here to leads. We are going to go into search and then we are going to come over here to phone calls because phone calls will be the number one priority of this entire account. That's what we want to do. Uh, we do not want to focus on website visits, store visits, app downloads or anything like that. We want leads. We want phone calls. Very, very simple to set up. Are all of these uh, objectives important and all of these campaigns important? Yes, they're all very useful, but for this account, uh, we are going after phone calls and we're doing a call only campaign. So you're free to ignore all of this. Uh, what we're going to do is name this campaign. What I like to do is normally I only like to have one or two campaigns in any single account that are actively running uh, for most businesses. Some businesses, of course, outliers, and there are other things that uh, need to be taken into consideration. But most service based businesses, you're good with one or two campaigns. When we look at a campaign, we want to look at essentially the services we are offering and the location we're offering it in. If we had multiple locations, say we're doing one in New York City, then another one in Vancouver, Canada, or, you know, China or Africa or wherever it is, then it probably makes sense to divide up these campaigns into different campaigns. It just it's going to be a lot easier to manage. Also, if you had different languages, having another campaign would also be useful. But for most can companies, one campaign, you're going to be completely fine to put your services inside of what I would highly recommend doing uh, before we get into any of this is actually sitting down, writing out a list of all of your top services. The reason for this is because you're going to easily be able to figure out what services are your best and which ones aren't your best and then double down on your winners and get rid of the losers very, very quickly. If you have a list, it's just really easy to do that. Some people have a lot of trouble coming up with uh, what services they should go after in their own head. So I really recommend writing them down. Once you figure out your best services, and these tend to be the most profitable with the least time invested, then I would say set up your campaign and then you can come up with all the different ad groups and keywords we want to target. It kind of becomes a lot simpler after that. So something super important to do. But for this campaign, what we're going to do is we're going to be going for a pool installation campaign as I've done these forever, it feels like, uh, and I'm really good at them. Uh, you could do an entire service. You could do essentially most of your offerings inside of one campaign. Like I said before, I would be going after the most profitable ones because either way, you have to spend money on these ads and it might as well yield you the best results possible. And that's going to be by going after your best services. Uh, so highly, highly recommend going after something like pool installation as opposed to selling pool noodles. You're going to make a lot more money off the pool installation than the pool noodles in most cases. Uh, so that's kind of uh, what I'm trying to convey here. Uh, also, if you're doing fencing, you don't want to really want to do fencing repair. You want to do fencing installation. Uh, if you were doing something like what's another one plumbing, you kind of want to do the entire plumbing system as opposed to some type of fix. Uh, generally, you're going to make a lot more money off that. So keep that in mind when setting up your campaign. Moving forward, we're going to hit continue. And then we will be prompted with a whole bunch of other stuff, which is the <laughs> bidding strategies, the campaign settings, keywords and ads, all this stuff looks confusing. It's not really confusing. It's pretty simple. And I'm going to show you how to do this all at the beginning. What I would suggest doing next is coming over here to the tools and settings button and then clicking the keyword planner. The reason for this is we want to figure out what our maximum cost per click should be. And uh, this isn't too difficult to actually figure out. Since we already have a list of everything that we are going after, so say this is pool installation uh, and we're going after fiberglass pools, in-ground pools, um, vinyl pools, we already know the keywords we're going after. We're gonna go know, we're gonna know what services are going to be our most profitable. And we can just start off by actually listing them inside of this little bar here. What we're gonna put is pool installation, vinyl, pool, installation, 
and then fiber glass pool installation. Now something important here to note is we have to geo modify this. This says Canada right here. If we leave this as Canada, it will take in all the data from all of Canada and that won't be accurate. What we want to do is only use the data from the locations we will be targeting inside of our Google ads. And the reason for this is we want accurate data. We don't want inaccurate data because if it's inaccurate, our account probably won't do all that well. Um, and that's going to lead to a lot of problems further down the line. So for this account, let's do Hamilton. Actually, since it's winter here, uh, I'm just going to do all of Ontario. Uh, I wouldn't recommend probably doing an entire province or state. That's a very big area. Some companies, you know, they do that. Uh, but, you know, use your own discretion is what I'm trying to say here. So uh, we're going to do all of Ontario just because it's winter here. And I want to see some search results as opposed to like zero. Uh, just to show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, what we're going to do is hit get results. Now, of course, you can start with a website. I don't normally recommend that uh, just because it's not as accurate. And uh, yeah, I just I don't have great results with it. That's just my personal experience. I'm sure some people have great results, but I prefer uh, just narrowing all this stuff down a lot earlier in the process. And I find entering these keywords is a lot easier to do. So what we're looking at is average monthly searches. Like I said, it's winter here, so it's not very high. Normally, you want to see 1000 to 10,000 on most of these keywords just to make sure we have enough search volume to actually bid on these keywords and to see consistent clicks day over day. If there's no one searching for these keywords, uh, we can bid as much as we like, we could put as high of a budget as we like, but there's going to be no clicks. Uh, so it's very important to have a high monthly uh, average of searches. Otherwise, you won't have any clicks and no clicks equals no leads. So yeah, uh, you get the point here. What we're going to be doing now is actually looking at these keywords. Most of the, these keywords are relevant to us. So pool contractors, pool installation, pool builders, pool companies, above ground, That's we can ignore that uh, as we don't do above ground pools. But all of this stuff is going to be very accurate and good for us. What I see here is the top of bid range. Uh, is essentially anywhere from nine to about $15. I think you could probably get away with a maximum cost per click of about 14 to $15 should not be an issue. Uh, it doesn't mean you're going to bid $15 every single click. It just means that is the maximum amount we are willing to bid. And I like putting that max in there just so Google doesn't go crazy for whatever reason. Sometimes the algorithm just goes, hey, we can get one click today and it's going to cost us $72. Just do it because that's technically the max. That's not always your best situation. So I like having that little fail safe to just say, hey, don't bid over this amount. Uh, what we're going to do is actually change this bidding strategy from conversions to clicks. The reason we want to do that is early on in the campaign's life cycle, uh, we don't have data inside of our account. Google ads, algorithm, AI, everything, all that it is, is absolutely amazing at figuring out what converts and what doesn't convert. And it will be much better at getting conversions than clicks uh, after about 30 conversions inside of your account. The issue is if it doesn't have that data early on, it is very slow to collect that data. And it, it just feels a little gun shy. It doesn't really want to go after anything. Uh, and sometimes for whatever reason, uh, it just it just falls flat. So we much prefer getting as much data in as possible. Will this waste a little bit of money at the beginning? Yes. However, your campaign will optimize a lot quicker and it will know what to bid on and what not to bid on because it has all this data. And that's one of the reasons we love maximize cost per clicks. For this one, uh, I'm just going to go with a cost per click bid limit of let's do 15.72. If you're unsure uh, of what to actually put as your maximum cost per click bid limit, you can just uncheck this. Chances are nothing bad is going to happen. It's going to do the exact same thing in 99% of cases, but I like having that little fail safe there. Uh, and then we can proceed. After about 30 conversions, like I said, you want to switch this to target CPA. Google will normally give you a recommended amount. So it'll say, hey, we can get you a conversion for, let's say, $45. I normally like putting a couple more dollars above that. The reason being, I like giving Google Ads AI a little bit more wiggle room to play. And you know, after a month or two, bring that back down and chances are the results are going to be a little bit better just because you gave Google ads that little bit of extra wiggle room. Uh, the AI is good, but it's not perfect. And uh, we try to give it as much leniency as possible at times. What we're going to do not next is hit next. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, this is something that's interesting, the search network campaign. Like I said before, 
average monthly searches is very important. If we are struggling with average monthly searches and we don't think we have enough search volume, the search network can be our best friend. Uh, however, if we have enough search volume, the search network tends to have lower quality traffic. You're not going to see as many conversions out of it sometimes. And I would say actually not sometimes, I would say the majority of the time. And that's most of our findings. Just the search network, the partner networks that Google partners with, they're just not as good as the normal Google organic search network for whatever reason. I'm sure you can come to your own conclusions on that, why other networks aren't as good. Uh, but for whatever reason, it just normally doesn't produce the same type of uh, leads as the normal organic network. So for most people, I would recommend unchecking this unless you have a search volume problem. Uh, I just like going after the higher quality leads and higher conversion rates and it just makes life a little bit easier, uh, especially if you're new to this as well. This way you don't have to filter this out and be checking which one uh, is performing better, whether it's organic search or Google search partners network, at least at the beginning. Uh, like I said, it gets a little complicated, but most people you can leave this unchecked provided you have enough search volume. Moving forward, we have locations. And what we're going to be doing is actually coming over here to location options. We are going to select presence. We only want to target people in or regularly in our targeted locations. We do not want to target people who have shown interest in our targeted locations. The reason for this is if someone lives in another country and then targets your country, your ad is actually viable to pop up just because they typed in let's say Hamilton, Ontario or New York City, but they don't live in New York City, they just typed it in because they're interested in it. The amount of accounts who still have this enabled and are wasting money on people who are not in their actual locations is astounding. To this day, I see probably 50 to 60% of the accounts we audit still have presence or interest enabled and it, it boggles my mind because you're just wasting a lot of money here and every dollar you wanna spend properly and to the best of its ability. Uh, inside Google Ads. You don't want to waste anything, especially in today's um, environment. Moving forward, what we're going to be doing is actually entering in a whole bunch of locations. And this isn't too hard to do. What we could do is type in Hamilton. Um, you could type in whatever you want. You could add locations by bulk here. Uh, I'm actually going to show you an easier way to add this later on. For now, uh, I'm just going to add Ontario as we're going to be targeting all of Ontario. Not too difficult. Uh, you could also exclude locations as well. I recommend doing that for the surrounding area just to help reduce uh, unwanted phone calls from those areas. Uh, it seems to help a little bit and anything that helps a little bit is something I'm willing to do. So uh, yeah, that's something uh, to keep in mind. I'm going to show you a little easier way. Also, I'm going to show you how to add radiuses as well around certain areas. So if you want to do a 50 mile radius around a certain city, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Moving forward, we have languages. I highly recommend adding only one language per campaign. This makes optimization and knowing what's working, what's not working a whole bunch easier. In Canada, we have a province called Quebec. They speak French. And uh, if I was going to be advertising, I would just do an entirely separate campaign because it, it's so much easier to manage results with two campaigns. You can see, hey, this campaign, maybe the English campaign is outperforming the French campaign or the French campaign is outperforming the English campaign for whatever reason. Maybe your ad copy is better. Maybe your landing page is better. I don't know, uh, but keeping those two things separate, much, much easier. I, I really do not like and do not recommend adding multiple languages uh, to a single campaign. It just makes everything so complicated and uh, makes your life a massive headache. So when you can separate these things, please do so. I'm only going to add English here, but if you wanted to add, you know, Chinese or Croatian or whatever, you can by just checking it off and getting rid of English. Uh, up to you. Moving forward, the next thing is audience segments. This is something that is very important. And we want to make sure we leave this in observation mode. Do not, do not, do not put this in targeting mode right now. Later on, you can put it in targeting mode, no problems. But right now we have no data whatsoever. If you put this in targeting mode, what will happen is you will only target people in these audience segments and Google will have a very limited amount of people to target normally. And you're going to see very little clicks, very little impressions. And uh, you're gonna you just, it's just, just don't, just don't do this. Don't click targeting. <laughs> it's just so much easier. The amount of accounts I've seen like, why am I getting no clicks, no impressions? And then I look and it's in targeting mode. And they ha they're targeting one segment that has 100 people. And it. it's like, that's why you're getting no clicks. Uh, because of that. Uh, what we can do here is we can type in stuff like pool installation, and essentially, Google ads groups people by interests and what they think are essentially segments of uh, certain audiences. 
And what you can do is actually target them, which is really cool. So for this one, we're going to do pools and spa in market means essentially people who are in the market to buy or what Google thinks is people who are in the market to buy, which may or may not be accurate. Uh, we could do outdoor items. We could do swimming enthusiasts. Uh, what we can do is also come over here to browse. We could do, you know, education. Maybe that's a factor. Home ownership. That's probably going to be a factor. Um, we can come over here to, you know, in market to buy well, something we just did. Uh, affinity interests, what they're interested in. I would add as many relevant segments as possible uh, and just go crazy with it. Really, if you had 10, 20 of these, not a problem at whatsoever. Google's just going to collect data on this. They will not adjust your account in any way, shape, or form based off the ones in observation mode, which is really nice. It just collects the data, lets you know what the results are, and then later on, you can actually set to targeting if you choose to do so, or maybe possibly just up one individual group and just up it by a certain bid percentage, that's completely fine too, and you can see better results there. Uh, but something super, super um, useful inside of Google Ads. Moving forward, we have Broad Match. Right now, we're not gonna be using Broad Match, and we probably won't be using it for this campaign. The reason being is it's just too lenient for these campaigns, and I'll explain a little more of that in a second. Uh, we also have more, more settings here. If we click on this little gear icon, uh, ad rotation. This is something that we sometimes use if our ads for whatever reason are just not performing well and we think it may be a Google ads problem like the AI for whatever reason is just not optimizing them well. This normally doesn't happen anymore. It did way back in the day like 2012, 2013 when the AI was really new and it would just pick an ad it liked based off almost no data and then just run it with it forever because it was like, yeah, clearly this is the best ad. And uh, that was something that was a big problem. However, Google's AI has gotten a lot better and this really should just be left as optimized unless you have some massive problem with ads. Um, not really gonna be something to consider. Start and end dates. This is nice if you're unfamiliar with Google ads and you wanna set a permanent end date. Uh, all you have to do is come over here, set a date, and then your campaign will turn off on, let's say December 31st or whatever you set it to. I'm just gonna select none for this because it's a little easier and uh, we can continue moving forward. Ad schedule. Uh, this is something that is super, super important when it comes to call ads and really overlooked uh, in almost every single campaign. The amount of campaigns I see running 24 seven and they're actually trying to get leads. They're not trying to sell things online, uh, which really the ad schedule doesn't matter as much if you're selling things online unless there's, you know, you have bad days or something like that. Uh, but when it comes to leads, you want to answer the phone quickly. You want to return emails quickly. You want to be as quick as possible because the quicker we respond, the more likely the person is to convert. There's a lot of studies out there that say anything over half an hour, if you make them wait, the odds of actually closing the sale go down dramatically. Uh, those percentage vary, Those percentages vary drastically. And essentially what we do know is that the longer you wait, the less likely the person is to buy from you because they they want their problem solved quickly and the longer you make them wait, the more likely they are to go find someone else or just forget about the problem entirely. Um, so that's something we have to make sure we address. So when we are setting an ad schedule, we need to make sure that we can respond to these calls as quickly as possible. If you can only respond to calls from noon to 3 p.m., that's completely fine. Set it to noon to 3 p.m. Do not set it 24 hours a day. You will wait, lose a lot of money and a lot of people will just be upset because you're like, why did you take two days to respond to a call? I've seen companies that they have their account running weekends. They don't work weekends and someone will call at like five o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday and they will not get responded to till Monday at like nine o'clock. And that is a big problem because the person's like, why did I have to wait three days? That's not somewhere where we want to be. So I highly, highly, highly recommend figuring out what your ad schedule is going to be. This is super important. What I highly recommend doing is if you're brand new to this, Mondays to Fridays seem to work the best uh, because people have less time to fix their problems. Um, and that's essentially what we go on. We want to give us give ourselves the best advantage possible. Saturdays and Sundays, people have a lot of time on their hands and there's a lot of time to essentially call around, figure out who the best quote is. Mondays to Fridays, if something breaks on a Wednesday, you're calling whoever is going to repair that, you know, probably the first guy you call, you're just going to be like, yeah, whatever it is, just come fix it. I don't have time to look around. Um, so that's kind of our thought process there. And it seems to work in the majority of majority of cases. Uh, if you're unsure whether or not that's going to work, 
Uh, by all means, you can test Saturday and Sunday. Uh, every company is different and every circumstance is different. But Mondays and Fridays for a lot of service-based businesses, those are going to be your best bets. For this one, I'm just going to do 9 till 5, you know, normal work day, maybe 8 till 5. You can set your hours to whatever you want, but please make sure you respond to these quickly. I can't overstate that enough. Campaign URL options, that's not going to be a problem here. And brand restrictions, unless you're using brands, uh, which you're probably not, uh, not going to be a big issue here. We can just skip that. We're going to hit next. And now what we're going to do is actually create a ad group. And what we can do here is click on our little pencil icon. For this campaign, we're going to create three ad groups. We're going to do one generic pool installation campaign. We're going to do one fiberglass and we're going to do one vinyl. Now, all of these are going to be different and all of these are going to have different keywords in them and they're all going to have different have ads associated with them. However, it doesn't mean this has to take a long time. I'm going to show you a trick to essentially skip this entire process or at least not skip it, but drastically reduce the amount of time you're going to spend here. But what we're going to do is after we've named this, you just click on the little pencil icon here. Uh, you can enter in a certain keyword URL services, whatever you want to do, and then it will suggest a whole bunch of keywords. I don't particularly like doing that. What I like doing is actually going in, finding the keywords we want, setting up a actual Excel spreadsheet and then copying and pasting them over. I have an entire video on how to actually do that. Uh, it will save you a whole bunch of time inside of Google ads and make your life a whole bunch easier. But that being said for this video, uh, I'm just going to be a little, um, not as professional because just for the sake of time, I, I, like I said, you should go into this, um, keyword planner, find out all of these keywords. That way you just have the best ones possible. I'm just going to do pool installation here. And then we're going to see a whole bunch of pool installation that comes up. Um, for this one, we see pool installation near me, pool builders, pool contractors, um, above ground. We're going to get rid of above ground swimming pool, pool fence. No pool, swimming pool installation, construction, in ground pool installation. That's fine. Swimming pool companies near me. No, swimming pool. That cost could be good. Uh, contractors, no. In ground pool cost. That's okay. And I'm going to give you my thought process going through here. I just kind of want to skim through here first. Uh, pool fence, no. Liner, no. Contractors, no. Uh, above ground pool. I would probably put contractors and builders into their own ad groups just because those are slightly different. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of these for now. Um, with call ads, we don't have as much flexibility when it comes to dynamic keyword insertion, which is something I address in the search campaigns. We just don't have access to that here. Um, so we need to be much more concentrated. So we have to go after those keywords that are very similar to our ads, pool installation, pool installation near me, swimming pool installation, very repetitive, uh, but hopefully you get the point here. Uh, when it comes to pool companies, that's not a super great indicator. Uh, I would definitely test out that keyword. The reason being is people could look for swimming pool companies that sell chlorine for their pools. That's not something we want to sell because that's not going to be our most profitable service here. We want to go after the most profitable keywords possible and get the most bang for a buck. And that's going to be going after these big boy keywords that are pool insulation, swimming pool installers, swimming pool insulation near me in ground pools. Um, another thing uh, that you can test out is cost. If someone types in estimates, costs, um, you know, projected expenses for pool insulation or something like that with reference to cost. Sometimes these are good. Sometimes these are bad. The reason being is sometimes people will still buy regardless. They're just looking for cost. They, they want to just find a pool insulation. Other times they're looking for the lowest cost possible. That is not going to be our best clientele. We do not want to compete on price. We want to be compete. We want to compete on quality. And normally cost, uh, if it's associated with the keyword, like pool insulation cost, in-ground pool cost, in-ground pool estimate, it could be hit or miss. For this one, I'm going to take it out, uh, but it could be one to test later on in its own ad group. What we're going to do is actually put brackets around these. The reason being is we want to put this into phrase match. Uh, essentially, there are three types of keywords. There is broad match, phrase match, and exact match. Exact match is the strictest amount of essentially viable search terms your keywords can pop up for. All that means is it has to be really, really close to pool installation or it won't pop up. The problem with that is there are keywords that are close to pool installation that are still gonna be very useful to us, but if we put it as 
exact match, it won't pop up. However, if we put it to broad match, it's going to be too lenient and you're going to go after just about anything. Uh, you'll go after pool installation estimates, pool installation liner fixes, pool installation or pools fixes. Like it, it's just going to pop you up for literally anything. You're going to waste a lot of money. Uh, most people with call only ads are going to be looking at phrase match. Phrase match is generally going to be your best bet, best bet right now inside Google ads uh, for call only ads. It's got a great balance of strictness, but also leniency where you can find these new keywords, uh, come up with new keyword ideas, create new ad groups later on in the actual campaign life cycle. But right now inside of Google ads, uh, phrase match is just really the king uh, of the actual types. If you have a whole bunch of keywords that you're uh, trying to put brackets around and you want to save time, I would suggest highly uh, this website adwordswrapper.com. It wraps all of these keywords and essentially you can just paste them in here, hit wrap, and then it will throw them all into phrase match, which is really, really nice. And you can just copy and paste them over here. Uh, super simple, super easy. And especially if you have, you know, like 10, 15, 20 keywords, uh, that's uh, something that you should uh, definitely be using just to save, save a little bit of time. All right, moving forward, what we have to do next is actually create our ad. Now, this is what a call ad looks like. They're very simple, but very effective. And essentially what it allows you to do is actually call the person directly from the ad. You don't have to go to a website. You don't have to do anything like that. They're super user friendly and they're really, really good for getting high quality phone calls. That being said, there's a few things you need to know. One is you have to use the actual proper uh, country when you actually enter in your phone number. If you do not, the ad will not work. So for this one, what we're going to do is enter in Canada. Since we are in Canada, I found a website online called Swimming Pools and Spas Quality Leisure Escapes. Uh, shout out to them. We're going to be using their website for this. Essentially, what we can do here is enter in a verification URL and a final URL. The difference between the two is one, you need a verification URL regardless. You need some type of website. However, you don't actually have to send anyone here. If we enter in the final URL, what happens is a little link below here sometimes pops up, not always, but it essentially allows you to go to a website and actually check it out. This kind of defeats the purpose of a call only ad, but some businesses like having that, especially if you have a good landing page, might be worth doing because some people want to go to your landing page. So it's up to you. Most people uh, I see using call only ads don't use it. Uh, it's kind of up to the individual circumstance to figure out what they want to do with it. But like I said, verification URL, you need this. So what we're going to do is enter in it here. If you don't want to use a final URL, that's completely fine. As you can see, the URL pops up after here and we are good to go. Uh, I'm going to enter in a final URL. I prefer having it. As you can see, the little link below here pops up to visit the website. If you don't want to enter it, completely fine. Like I said, the display path is a little... Uh, essentially extension after the actual URL here. It makes your website look a little bit more professional uh, for things people are looking for. So we could do pool installation and as you can see installation and it just makes it more unique to the customer's perspective. If they typed in pool installation, it just makes it look a little bit more professional, gives them a little bit more information. And the bigger we can make our ad, the more likely it is to be clicked on, the more likely it is to be clicked on, the more likely it is uh, to be converted on and make a sale and you know generate more money for you. So we really want to make our ad as big as possible. If we can add one more extension, one more link, I'm all for it. Please take the time to do so. Essentially, the next part is the headlines and the business name and the descriptions. What these are are essentially uh, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to have two headlines, two descriptions, and a business name. For the business name, this is pretty easy. We're just going to take the actual quality plus your leisure escapes, and we'll throw that in here as the business name. As you can see, it pops up here. I wouldn't do this all cap locks. I don't think it looks good. Uh, quality pools and spot. You know what? Let's just do that. I'm not exactly sure what the name of this place is, um, but we'll just kind of guess as we're not running an actual campaign here. Um, so it's not a big deal, but it looks a lot better without all the uh, cap locks on, as you can see, and it pops up right here. Uh, for your headline, I've created an entire video on how to actually write good ads. I would definitely check that out if you're new to this. For call only ads, we're very limited, so we have to be very, very good at what we do when it comes to actually uh, enticing the customer into actually clicking our ad. As we have very limited space, that's a little more difficult to do, but 
you know, nonetheless, we have to A-B test all of this stuff and really try and up our ad quality as much as possible. So what I recommend doing is first off, identifying the problem. I would say looking for pool installation. And one of the things you can do is end it with a question. That makes it look really unique. Uh, not many ads have questions and it makes people think a little bit more and they might spend a little bit more time on your ad. I like to identify the problem, give reasons to buy, and then end with a call to action. And what this looks like could be uh, looking for pool installation or pool installation near me or pool installation, Hamilton, Ontario, pool installation, New York City. It just identify the problem that the customer is looking for. So you're on the same page as them. Give them reasons to buy. Maybe it's lifetime warranty and then call to action. Call now for a free coat. And that entire little journey allows the person to go, okay, they know what I'm looking for. Here's the reason to buy. And I know exactly what happens next. I'm going to call them. I'm going to get a free quote with a call only ad. They kind of know what's going to happen next. So it's not as important to give a call to action. I would much rather give reasons to buy and more more so identify the problem. Uh, I would do lifetime guarantee, uh, lifetime guarantee on pools and try and use as much space as possible. That is going to be a another thing you can take advantage of. Try to use as close to 30 out of 30 as possible. Uh, the bigger it is, the more likely it is to be seen. Like I said before, the more likely it is to be clicked on. Higher click-through rates give higher quality scores. Higher quality scores give better discounts on the actual cost per click. Lower cost per click leads to more clicks. More clicks leads to more sales, and more sales leads to more money in your pocket. So something super important to do. When it comes to description, we kind of just want to expand on all of this. So what we can do here is, what's a good description we could come up with? We could come up with local pool in XYZ city, uh, 30 plus years experience, certified professionals call now. Uh, da, da, da. We'll do local, we'll do pool insulation in Actually, we'll just do local pool installation. Local pool installation, 30 plus years of experience. I know my spelling isn't great. Certified professionals, call now. I like ending it off with a call to action uh, as it just, again, reiterates what we want them to do. Uh, and that that's starting to look really good. Local pool installation, 30 years of experience, certified professionals, call now. And then our description line two, we'll just add on further uh, on that. So it could be uh, we offer vinyl fiberglass actually we offer in ground vinyl fiberglass pools Um, actually, we'll just do get a get a requote. Now, there we go. Cool. And as you can see, this just gives more reasons to buy. We offer in-ground vinyl and fiberglass pools. Process takes two weeks. Get a free quote now. Uh, essentially identifying the problem, giving more reasons to buy, and ending with a call to action. All of that is done there. It looks really, really good. Uh, moving forward, what we can do is essentially add this to calls from ads, or we can set up our own conversion action. I'm going to set up our own conversion action in a second just to make sure we track every single call. Um, and then that will allow us to essentially get a better read on things and we can adjust 
things. I'll, I'll show you in a second. Essentially, it plays with a couple timers, uh, which is kind of important. But right now, we're just going to hit next and then go from there. Our budget, uh, what I would recommend is at least one conversion a day, or every day you're running. So that could be five days a week, so five conversions. What this is going to look like is usually 10 clicks per day. So we set our maximum cost per click at about $15. So that's looking at about $150 a day. Keep in mind, this is pool installation. So there's a lot of money there. And so 150 or sorry, 15 times 10, you get 150, you should be fine there. And then you can go from there. Just normally multiply your maximum cost per click by 10, you should find your budget pretty easily. Uh, but normally 10 clicks, you should be fine. Moving forward, all we have to do is hit next. We can review all of this. And then there's a few things we have to touch up. We have to expand our ad groups. We have to add the extensions. We have to check out the, uh, I, there's a few other things. I'll remember in a second, <laughs> no problems. Uh, all we have to do now is hit publish campaign. This will immediately turn on. This is not what we want. We want deposit right away. So all we have to do is come over here. We click on our campaign. We hit pause because we, we are, uh, not actively actually running this. We want to wait. We want to make sure this is completely built out before we actually run this because we don't actually want to uh, set up a campaign that's only half done. That's not good. And if you forget to do that, it's probably not going to be a big deal. Uh, policy review takes two days anyway, so you'll probably finish the campaign in that time. All right, continuing on with the campaign, uh, we have two things we have to do before actually finishing building out the campaign and running the extensions and everything like that. Uh, what we're going to do is come over here to locations. Uh, if you don't see it, we just click on show more, we hit locations, and then we come over here to the pencil icon. If you want to add locations by radius, all you have to do is hit pen mode, hit that, hit target, you're good to go, bada boom, bada bing, very, very simple. Uh, but it is kind of nice if you want to expand that to 50 miles, you can hit pin, now it's bigger, and you're good to go. Uh, that's great for service-based businesses who only want to do a radius. They don't care about certain cities. Uh, it's really, really nice. If you want to add them by, you know, just locations, also very easy to do. You just type them in. We could do, you know, Hamilton, Ontario. You could also hit nearby, so you can add a whole bunch of nearby cities as well if you choose to do so. But very, very simple. You hit save. You're good to go. Now, the next step is the actual conversion tracking. Conversion tracking for call ads, very, very, very simple. I like creating my own conversion tracking for the actual call ads, just so it's easy to identify where they are, what they're counting as. Uh, earlier on with Google ads, they would essentially go under phone calls, which weren't essentially a conversion action. They were a little difficult to see, which made things a big pain. Uh, I don't know why Google did that. That's pretty much changed now, and you should be fine even if you don't set this up, but I like dividing it up. I think it's easier. So we come over here to tools and settings. Um, and then we're going to come over here to new conversion action. And then we're going to hit phone calls. We're going to do call only ads and extensions. I like dividing call, ex call extensions and call only ads up just to see what's converting better. We hit continue. We're going to do uh, calls from call only ads just so we can identify where these calls are coming from. Uh, if you have a value assigned to every single call and what you want it to, you know, generate inside of a Google ads account or what it's worth, uh, by all means, you can use that. Most people don't, uh, moving forward, we have the count, essentially how many conversions do we want to count per interaction? If someone calls you back from the exact same ad, do we want to count them again? Normally, no, we only want to count, count them once because it's only one interaction. If you were selling products online, every time someone bought something online, we would want to count that as a new interaction or a new conversion. But for leads, you normally only want to count that as well. The next thing is the actual call length. Early on in the campaign lifecycle, I recommend putting this down to one second, just so you can see every single call that comes through. Later on, if you want to, you know, make this more of a higher quality uh, phone call and you only want to do, you know, 60 seconds or 120 seconds or whatever it may be, absolutely you can up it. Uh, but at the very beginning, we want as much data as possible. So I recommend putting it down to one second. Click through window is essentially if someone interacts with the ad and then calls back on the same number, uh, do we want to count them as a lead again after 30 days? You can set this to whatever you want. I think 30 days for most people is fine. Uh, they're not normally saving numbers and recalling them. So, you know, uh, use your best judgment here. When it comes to attribution, uh, data-driven is essentially uh, the way to go now. Most of these are essentially been removed. And uh, yeah, uh, everything's essentially moving to data-driven. Let Google's AI do what it does best. Uh, let it do 
all of the actual interactions and figuring out how much credit to give every single click. Um, it, it's much better at figuring this stuff out than a human. <laughs> it's just, it's really, really good. So I would trust it. All we have to do now is hit create and continue. And this process is very, very easy. All we have to do is hit done. And now we have our new conversion action and we're good to go. What we're gonna do is come back here. We're gonna come over here to our pool installation ad group, the very first one. We're gonna come over here to our ad and we are going to essentially edit this. We click on the little pencil icon here and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna come over here to our conversion action. We're gonna hit calls from call only ads, hit save new. And now every time someone calls from this ad, it will then essentially tick that conversion action and say, we got a phone call. So that way we can identify where the call came from. It's coming from call only ads. It's not coming from an extension or a search campaign or a YouTube campaign or whatever it is. We know exactly where it's coming from. Nice, easy to understand, and we're good to go. Now moving forward, what we're going to do is essentially double out all of our ads and then double out our ad groups. The reason we want to essentially double our ads first is it makes doubling out ad groups a lot easier. So what we're gonna do is hit edit. We're gonna hit copy. We're gonna hit paste. And then we're just gonna essentially paste this. And then yeah, pause, check these off, hit paste. And then this is essentially gonna double the ad out. Now you may be thinking, why do I want to double out the ad? I already have this ad in there. Well, yeah, that makes sense, but it makes sense also to save a lot of time because what we can do is just change a few things. And now we have a new, entirely new ad and we don't have to re-enter in the phone number. We don't have to enter in a new URL. It, it just saves us a whole bunch of time. So maybe this one is going to be cool installation in Ontario, lifetime guarantee on pools. We can do 30 plus years of uh, pool installation. And then we could change up this to be mm, looking for dream pool call today. for professionally installed in-ground pools. Yeah, it's probably not the best, but it is something that you could try, uh, trying to make it a little bit more fancy, looking for your dream backyard pool. Maybe that appeals to a different, different, uh, different demographic. Uh, I don't think it's my favorite, but sometimes we do get winners that are like really out there that the ad does really well. And we're like, that shouldn't do well, but because it's just unique and no one else is doing that, uh, it tends to do well. It's worth trying and kind of throwing out like a curveball, uh, looking for your dream pool or looking for your dream backyard or something like that. Maybe that appeals, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, certified professional pool installers, dozens of happy clients, you know, quick installation, maybe call now. Uh, that's not the best, but it's all right. It's all right. You know, if I had a little bit more time on my hands, we could come up with a little bit better description line, uh, but these aren't terrible. And all we have to do now is hit save new. And this is essentially a brand new ad. We just turn this on. We click the little uh, gray icon here and you just hit enabled and you're good to go. We're gonna double this out one more time. We're gonna hit paste, we're gonna check these two off. Boom, boom, boom. And this is essentially gonna double out the ad one more time. The reason we want three ads, and by the way, you're only allowed three ads in every single ad group. The reason we want three ads is essentially to allow Google's AI to test this as much as possible. We wanna give it the most amount of material to just play with and A-B test as much as possible, figure out what works, figure out what doesn't work. Most people, and by most, I mean 95% uh, will not have more than one to two ads inside of their campaign. The amount of people who only have one ad per ad group is astonishing. Uh, it is absolutely, you know, crucial to have all this material for Google ads to actually test this stuff and people just will not take the time to do it because it takes too much time. We created a actual little document called the Google ads done for you bundle. Um, I'll leave the link down below, but it comes up with all pre-made headlines, pre-made descriptions. It makes everything a lot easier in your life and people still 
to this day will not take the time to actually just enter in these headlines. It, it boggles my mind. I'm actually gonna use it on this one just cause um, it's gonna make things a little easier and a little quicker. Uh, we'll do license and insured pool. pool. Installers. Ah, license and insured. Uh, we'll do license pool installers, that's fine. Uh, we'll do one more, always on time, looking for local. Yeah, that's cool, we'll do this. Local pool company, local pool. You know what, we'll just leave it like that. In NYC, you know, or you know, maybe Ontario is better, but you get the point, I'm just trying to make it a little fun. Uh, more engaging, more uh, interesting local pool installers in NYC. And especially if the people are located in that certain area, uh, this will definitely appeal to them. If they're not, then it won't. So you kind of got to pick your battles here. Um, moving back to the done for you bundle. There we go. Throw that in there. Cool. There we go. Qualified pool. We'll put pool. Mm. Yeah, that looks good. Actually, we'll do this one instead. This one looks better. Cool. And then we make sure that's from calls for calls from call only ads, make sure that's the same conversion action. Good. And we are essentially done for this entire ad group, which is really, really nice. Uh, it doesn't take you too long, especially at the Google ads done for you bundle that should take you maybe five minutes, not even. And uh, you're going to have three out of three ads. Now all we have to do is double out our ad groups. Uh, super simple. We just come over here to our pool installation campaign, hit ad groups. As you can see, we have our one ad group. We're going to hit copy. We're going to hit paste. And then we will do, we'll do three ad groups just to show you guys. I probably won't change all the ads in here, uh, but just to show you essentially what it should look like. I recommend for any campaign, you normally want three to five ad groups at the beginning. You don't want to go overboard. Uh, the reason for that is if you have too many ad groups and you don't have a big enough budget, uh, it's very, very hard to optimize these things and figure out what is working. If you only have a click in every single ad group, as opposed to, you know, 20 clicks in one ad group, um, it's just going to take forever to optimize. So I highly, highly recommend concentrating and only having a handful of ad groups at the beginning. You may only want one ad group at the beginning. Um, it's uh, really, really up to you uh, what you want to do, but I highly recommend concentrating and uh, going from there. Uh, what I would do now is fiberglass pool installation for this one and then the next one will be what will the next one be vinyl so what we have here is actually a whole bunch of keywords that are not relevant to us so what we have to change in each of these ad groups now that we have fiberglass is change these to essentially fiberglass pool installation as opposed to swimming pool installation uh, what i would recommend doing is actually coming over to your keyword idea taking all of these actual keywords uh, and adding them in for this sake of example, I'm not going to bore you guys going in being like, Oh, okay. This one is looking good. We're going to add fiberglass pool insulation. We'll add that here. We'll, you know, find a massive list and then we'll delete all the current ones. Uh, that's just going to take way too long for us. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's do one example, just so you guys can see fiberglass pool insulation. There we go. Hmm. Good, good. We'll get rid of cost here. And we're gonna throw that in the actual ad wrapper. There we go. Why is this not popping up? Oh, they're doubles. That's why. Anyway, that's why. Uh, we're just gonna throw that in there. And then we're going to hit save. All right. And as you can see, they've all popped up inside of here. I should have deleted this uh, first off uh, just so it's a little easier. We just uncheck all of these ones. 
or sorry, check all of these ones. Then we hit edit, we hit remove, and then it will remove all of these ones that are relevant to us. And now we just have fiberglass blue insulation uh, inside this ad group. All we have to do now is actually change the ads up. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna change uh, essentially most of this stuff just to fiberglass. Uh, it's not a super difficult process. Uh, local pool installers, we could do local fiberglass pool installers. Installer, local, we'll do fiberglass pool installers. Uh, that'll probably be better. Licensed fiberglass pool installers. Uh, licensed, actually award-winning fiberglass pools. There we go. Uh, and then for the rest of this, a lot of this stuff doesn't have to be changed uh, as much. We could do professional fiberglass pool installers. And you see how I'm just adding the word fiberglass. Uh, this seems rather dumb and that it's not going to be useful. Trust me, it does make a world of difference because if you have an ad that says fiberglass pool installers as opposed to just pool installers, and those are the only two ads and someone actually typed in fiberglass pool installers, I wonder what ad that person's going to pick. Uh, they're gonna go with the fiberglass pool installers just because it's more relevant to them. So I know this seems like a very taxing process, but it is worth it. Um, and honestly, it doesn't take that much time, especially if you write good ads at the beginning and uh, it just makes life a whole bunch easier. So we did that. Uh, we can do over here, we can do fiberglass. Pool insulation in Ontario. Let's do fiberglass. So, and if you have a long enough word, sometimes it gets hard to come up with new ideas. Fiberglass pool insulation. Um, we'll do 30 years plus pool insulation. We could probably leave that. Um, looking for your dream fiberglass pool. Call today for professionally installed. That's fine. And again, very simple, very easy. Lou hundreds. Oh, oops. There we go. Happy clients or hundreds of happy clients. Cool. Save new version. And then we have one more. And all we have to do is hit edit. We'll do fiberglass one more time. Pool insulation, looking for fiberglass pool insulation. That's too long. Da 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 da. Fiberglass pool insulation. We'll leave it at that. Lifetime guarantee on pools, quantity, yeah, local pool insulation. Cool. Perfect, that's all good. They have, oops, a little spelling error there. Make sure all your stuff is spelt right. Uh, again, I'm flying through this. I'm not actually looking at most of it. Uh, just trying to get you guys uh, to understand what I'm talking about. We hit save new, we're essentially good to go. Now all we have to do is double out our ad group one more time. We're gonna hit, actually we're gonna turn this on. So we hit our campaign, we hit ad group, and then we just turn this back on. We're gonna double this out, we're gonna hit copy. We're gonna hit paste. You might hear a chew toy in the background. That's my dog. In case you're wondering. <laughs> and by the way, this may take a little bit of time to actually add in new ad groups or copy out ads. Uh, sometimes Google's um, online interface or servers or whatever are just slow. Um, so if it takes a minute or two, that's why. I've had it take like several minutes. Uh, so that's to be expected sometimes. What we're gonna do, edit the name here. We're gonna do vinyl pool installation. All right, and then once we have this done, we do the exact same thing, which is just switch these keywords out. We're gonna essentially take this, remove this all, and then we just come over here to our new ideas. We'll do, what did we have? We had vinyl. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's come over here. No, Mr. Ad, we don't want you. Final uh, near me. Uh, pool installation company, that's fine. Final pool. Uh, 
installers. And of course, you should actually be looking at this stuff, uh, unlike me, again, flying through this stuff. Uh, local, we'll do local as well. And then we'll just wrap this stuff. Good, copy, paste, oh, paste, save. Let me come over here to our ads and we do the exact same thing, which is vinyl pool installation. Looking for, you know, vinyl pools, local vinyl pool, lifetime guarantee on pools. Uh, I think you guys are starting to get the point. I'm only going to do one here, local vinyl pools. Uh, that's pretty much fine. And then we just hit save. Please finish off the next two ads, uh, but I'm gonna continue on to the actual assets here um, as this is really our last bit of information we have to deal with. And then we are essentially done and uh, we can actually launch our campaign and go from there. Now, moving forward, what we have to do is set up our extensions, also known as assets now. Um, essentially, all we do is click on our campaign. Make sure it's clicked on at the campaign level, not the ad group level. That will just waste a whole bunch of time. It's really... Uh, not worth going through uh, at the ad group level. It's just, it's a real time consuming process there. But what we want to do is actually create four ad extensions. Uh, this will allow our ad to actually be bigger than our competition. Uh, now they've actually included the business name and business logo, which is something that you should be adding on. Uh, but it, those two extensions will take time to actually add on. Uh, you have to come over here to tools and settings, come down here to the actual advertising verification. I made an entire video on that. I've already uh, done this for this account, but for sake of simplicity, you go on this, uh, it should pop up here. And uh, then you can add your business name and business logo. I'll skip that because it's very simple to do, uh, but you should add those two. But the four extensions we need to do are the website extension, which we already did. You can choose to use that or not. The structured snippet extension, the call out extension, and the location extension. The location extension this is going to be optional. A lot of businesses, uh, they have a physical location, but a lot of clients don't actually go there. Uh, you get charged every time someone clicks on your location extension. So if it's not a massive thing, if you're not a bar or a movie theater or something like that, where all your money comes from people visiting you, I would probably advise not using the location extension. That being said, I would highly advise using the call it extension and the structured snippet extension. These two things are awesome to add them. Very simple, click on call it extension, click on the big blue plus icon, and then we just add a whole bunch of them here. Uh, for uh, sake of simplicity, I'm gonna use the Google Ads done for you bundle. We have a whole bunch of extensions here. Uh, I'm just going to, let's see, trusted for upfront pricing, local service, we'll do that. Guaranteed, what was the other one we did? We just did one, uh, workmanship guaranteed, that's fine. Actually, we'll do a lifetime guarantee. And what we're doing here is essentially just giving more reasons to buy and listing them out. They're just bullet points on why you should pick us. It makes the decision process very easy for the individual. Um, always available 24 seven. That could be a great one. Uh, moving forward, we have, you know, maybe affordable pricing isn't great for pool installation. Fast response, uh, vinyl. And fiber glass options. Actually, we'll do pools. Mm. Ah, so close to two week installation process. Uh, what else could we do? Um, and you see how I'm kind of taking my time to look through here and just really come up with a good idea of what we should be doing. Uh, I'm, I should take a little bit longer, get a quote now. That's cool. Get a free quote now, you know, free quote, maybe free assessment, um, licensed and insured. Mm, 30 plus years 
um, experience. And again, just giving more reasons to buy. Maybe in ground pool professionals. Actually, what else could we do? Number one pool installer in GTA, which is Greater Toronto Area or New York City or whatever you want to do. Uh, but just giving more reasons to buy. What you want to do is have 10 of them at least. That way, Google can essentially cycle through all of these and go on from here. Once we're good with that, if you want to add more, you absolutely can. Uh, I would advise as Matty adding as many as you can. That way Google can just cycle through all this stuff and have a fun time optimizing with it. The more, the better normally. The next and final extension we have here is structured snippet extensions. Very, very simple to do. All you have to do is click over here. And same thing, we wanna add it at the campaign level, not the ad group or the account level. Uh, account level sometimes, but if you have happen to have any campaigns that are somewhat different, uh, like say you did a snow plowing campaign in the winter and then a pool installation campaign in the summer, those extensions may not uh, combine well. So, you know, use your better judgment. Uh, structured snippet ext extensions, people, a lot of people actually stay away from them because they don't know what to do. Um, but you need essentially two of them at least. And what they do is essentially allow you to jot down a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of people are confused by them, uh, but you can kind of get around them if you follow what I'm doing um, Brampton. for almost every company, by the way, you can do this for a lot of people are like, I don't know what to do. Completely fine. Uh, neighborhoods could be used for essentially every single company. And uh, very, very, very simple. Uh, Brampton, Berlin, actually not Burlington. Let's do, oh, you know, Cayuga. Shout out to Cayuga. And you just dot down a whole bunch of neighborhoods. You can essentially create lists here. And that's essentially all structured snippet extension is, is creating lists. Uh, service catalog is another one, styles. So you could do types or you know what, let's do styles. We'll do in-ground pools, fiberglass. And maybe this isn't exactly what this was meant for, but you can kind of finagle your way around this and figure it out. Pools. All we want to do is make our ad as big as possible. That's the end goal. Um, and you know what? Let's add one more just for the sake of uh, showing you guys. Because I really like these and they're often overlooked styles. Actually, no, no, no. Where are we going? Where are we going? Mm, service catalog. Pool insulation. You know, pool. Maybe it's opening. Pool. Liners. I, I probably wouldn't put this for this exact campaign because we're not doing liners or openings, but you can kind of start to see where it's like, oh, there's actually a lot of wiggle room here and I can play with this. Um, and then after you've done all of this, you want at least two of these uh, so Google can cycle them and you should be good to go. Now with all of this done, you're essentially good to turn on your campaign. All you need to do now, if you want to, you don't have to do this, is actually go to settings and then go to account settings. Um, this is essentially call recording and it will allow you to essentially record calls for a certain period of time. And uh, it's kind of nice if uh, you want to just make sure your calls are being answered. Um, if you have a third party call analytics provider like CallRail, that's super useful. Uh, but if you want to save call recordings for 30 days, uh, you just turn that on, hit save, you make sure you accept the thing and uh, you're good to go. You can come back here, turn on your campaign should take a day or two to actually turn on. But there is one more thing that you must do and that is optimize the campaign. What you need to do is actually go into our search terms report. You come over here to insights, you come in here to search terms. You will have a whole bunch of search terms pop up that are not relevant to you. And you're gonna have to actually add those as negatives to make sure you no longer appear for them. And you wanna really double down on your winners and get rid of the losers. What I do recommend checking out is our Google Ads optimization checklist. It's completely free and it walks you through on what to optimize on a weekly, monthly, and three month basis. It also lets you jot down your results so you can see you're making progress month over month. Like I said, it's completely free. The link is down below and we use it to continuously optimize our accounts and see better results month over month. Uh, it's very simple, but very, very uh, useful and effective. A lot of people do not optimize their accounts and it's just one of those things that if you choose not to optimize, you're going to be left in the dust uh, just because Google is ruthless and uh, yeah. 
it's something you need to do. So if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about call only ads or anything regarding Google ads in general, please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It did take me forever to film this video. So a thumbs up and a comment, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. But it literally, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down below. I will do my best to answer it. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. I wish you the best with the call only ads campaign. They are very, very useful. And I hope it gets you a ton of results and a ton of sales. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care. I wish you all well.